Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Griffin City Board of Commissioners, May 23, 2000, May 23rd, 2023. We're going to open up with Commissioner Murray leading the pledge, followed by Commissioner Tinsley with the invocation. If you'll please join us. Most questions have been Father, We're here today to ask for your blessings and guidance and fullness of our duties as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us recognize the solid problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just to the best interests of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings. Keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. First item is to approve the agenda as presented. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? We have a motion by Commissioner Tinsley, second by Commissioner Murray. All in favor, please signal by raising hand. Four zero. It's five zero, Ms. Ward voting yes. Okay, moving into presentations and delegations. First item is to present a proclamation declaring May 21 to 27, 2023 to be National Public Works Week and Public Works Week in the City of Griffin. Followed with a presentation of proclamation for Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So we have a group I know from Public Works here. So we'd love to end Public Works Week. So call on up Public Works folks. So did you feed them well last yesterday evening or afternoon? Yeah. Great time, great picture of your team and everybody together. Welcome everybody. So we have a proclamation tonight, National Public Works Week, Public Works Week in the city of Griffin, connecting the world through public works. Whereas the infrastructure, facilities, and services that are collectively known as public works are of vital importance to sustainable communities and to the health, safety, and the well-being of the people of the city of Griffin, hereby contributing immediately to our citizens' quality of life. And whereas such facilities and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public work professionals, engineers, managers, and employees from the state and local units of the government, and the private sector who are responsible for and must plan, design, build, operate, and maintain the transportation, cemetery, golf course, public buildings, parks, fleet management, signs and other structures and facilities essential to services of our citizens. And whereas it is the public's interest for the citizens, civic leaders and children of Griffin, our state and our nation to gain knowledge of and to maintain a progressive interest in the importance of public works and public work programs in their respective communities. And whereas in the year 2023, from May 21 to 27, marks the 63rd Annual National Public Works Week, NPWW, sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Through NPWW and, and our efforts, the APWA seeks to raise the public awareness of public works issues and increase confidence in and appreciation for public works employees who are dedicated to improving our quality of life for not only present but future generations. Be it now resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the City of Griffin do hereby declare that this proclamation be spread upon the minutes of the City's Board of Commissioners meeting and that its official seal be affixed, designated the week of May 21 through 27, 23, to be National Public Works Week and Public Works Week in the City of Griffin. And we urge all citizens to join with representatives of the American Public Works Association, as well as the local state government agencies and activities and ceremonies designed to pay tribute to our public work professionals, engineers, managers, and employees, and to recognize the substantial contributions they make to our national health, safety, welfare, and quality of life. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Griffith to be affixed on this, the 23rd day of May, in the year of our Lord, 2023, signed Douglas S. Holberg, Mayor, Jessica W. O'Connor, City Manager. 
So we'd like to present this proclamation and get a picture with our board and celebrate everything you do for us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If y'all want to come up here, let's gather around. Board. Rise. Would you like to tell me All right, so I just want to say thank you, um, you guys, for all you do day in and day out. Um, I truly appreciate all the hard work um, you put in to make the sure the job is done right and efficient, efficiently and well. Um, I also want to spotlight in particular the storm um, from January. Um, you guys stepped into roles that you would not normally have done, and you did so willingly. So thank you for doing that. Um, and I'm just honored to be a part of this team. So thank you. Thank you, folks. All right, at this time, we're going to do the uh, proclamation for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I believe we have members of our edit team here to join us. Welcome. I hope y'all are all doing well today. So, proclamation for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Whereas in 1979, Congress designated the week of May 4 as the annual celebration and observance of Asian American, Native, Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Week. The week-long celebration was extended to the entire month in 1990 by an act of Congress. And whereas during Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, we celebrate and learn about the diverse and tremendous contributions made by Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Among their contributions are those made in science, government, politics, and armed forces, medicine, literature, sports, and the arts. And whereas the history of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders is filled with the stories of resilience, persistence, and determination, and we value AAPI citizens as an integral part of the fabric of our community. And whereas the city of Griffin wishes to pay tribute to the government to the generations of Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders in our community. This month provides us with the opportunity to reflect on the vibrant culture and numerable contributions AAPI residents make in our community. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the City of Griffin do hereby proclaim May 23 as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in the city of Griffin and urge all citizens to explore AAPI history, culture, and accomplishments. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set the hand and caused the seal of the city of Griffin to fix on this 23rd day of May in the year of our Lord, 2023, signed Douglas S. Holberg, Mayor, and Jessica W. O'Connor, City Manager. So, welcome, and if we can get another photo. And I know Alexis will probably say something. We all want to drink So I actually don't have a lot of knowledge about this culture, um, and I want to because it is an absolutely beautiful culture. There are some uh, amazing artists and scientists and brilliant thinkers that come from this place, from these cultures, from these islands, and I love the idea that we can celebrate them, and I hope that we will do that even more so throughout, of course, this month, but for all time in the future. So I want to say thank you so much for celebrating them and for acknowledging them. And I hope that we can um, embrace even more so all of their art and culture in Griffin. Thank you. Thank you, Alexa. And thank you to the edit team. Dr. Jones. Welcome. 
thank you. I want to thank the edit team for accepting this proclamation. Um, of course, one of the goals of our CDIC is to always make sure that we're being very inclusive um, of everyone in the community, um, which is why we advocated to have this proclamation presented. Um, but just to give a little bit of knowledge, um, we have about 1.53% of our citizens here in Griffin that identify as Asian American. Um, and some history, uh, Japanese Americans actually really uh, revolu revolutionized the fruit agriculture. And uh, we had a lot of Chinese immigrants that helped to build the Transcontinental Railroad, uh, which we get a lot of our goods and things delivered. Um, so it's definitely a very important uh, part of our history and of our culture. And we just wanted to make sure that uh, our citizens are celebrated. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moving to citizen comments. At this time, the mayor opens the floor to comment from the audience. Comments should relate to the specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for public hearing or to the concern within the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a forum for the unwritten expression of opinion. The mayor reserves the right to limit comments to matters germane to city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff for resolution. With that being said, is there anybody on my left side I'd like to come before the board? Ms. Sherry, please come forward. Happy day. Huh? Happy day. Please state your name. Sharon Wright, 1118 Pine Valley Road, Griffin, Georgia. Um, hey, Holly, how you doing? Congratulations mm -hmm. to Gordon. Okay. And also, I'd like to say congratulations to Public Works folks, because I tell you, they do a lot of hard work. And they do things for me that, you know, I mean, out of the dark. And, you know, I really do appreciate them. And for those of you, welcome to Griffin, okay? All right. Um, I hate to have to be a bearer of bad news, but really, I think there's some things that need to be looked at in Griffin. And um, one of them, it seems like the water is beginning to smell like chlorine really bad. And we got a lot of speeding going down Maple Drive. And especially between the hours of 5 and 730 in the evening. And we got kids. They may not be out at that time. We got lots of dogs, cats, and everything else like that. But I mean, they're flying. But last of all, uh, I know Jessica. I've talked to you about this before, um, and I also do want to appreciate the fact that you put the new dog waste things out. That's really nice. Really do appreciate that. Um, now going on second week in our neighborhood again in Pine Valley that yard waste hasn't been picked up. And Jessica, I know that Mrs. Brown called you, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, and just wanted to let you know that I did call Becky because when that same day that happened, the yard waste guy had stopped at the round the corner there where the big hole is. I think it's 11 something. And he was up there picking up waste. And then I go into my driveway and I have to go to Orchard Hill. So I go out the back way. I come back in the back way, and of course, I walk my dog anywhere from 5.30 to 7.30 at night, okay? And as I pass her um, house, basically what it boils down to is her mailbox is laying on the ground, flattened out, and nobody else's yard waste had been picked up on those two spots. So I would almost bet my bottom dollar that the guy made a mistake and hit her mailbox by mistake. And I hope that the city pay for it or they pay for it. Yeah, I, I, you know, I just wanted to let you know, that's what I noticed. And believe me, I do notice a lot of things in this town. And I know, Jessica, you don't like to hear from me, but, you know, and I don't want to be a bearer of uh, bad news, but you guys do a great job. I want to say thank you and good night. Thank you, Sharon. Good day. Is anybody else on my left side like to come for the board? Is there anybody on my right side like to come before the board? Okay. Moving into the consent agenda, we have items three through five. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Yeah. Ms. Murray with motion, second by Mr. Brock. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six, zero. Moving into the regular agenda. Consider the minutes of the City of Griffin Board Commissioner's regular meeting on May 9th. 
all were present except for the Commissioner Timsley. Do we have a motion to approve? Ms. Murray with Second. motion, second by Ms. Ward. All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. 501 with Mr. Timsley abstain. Item seven is consider contract with Yancey Brothers, single source, the amount of $31,046.77 for a mulch head repair operated with skid steer within the street department. Ms. Murray with motion. Second. Second by Mr. Timsley. All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. Six zero. Item eight is considered contract with Waco single source in the amount of $40,631.92 repaired to the pole barn located at the street department. Ms. Ward with a motion with a second. Second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six zero. Item nine is consider purchase of software maintenance for the Griffin Police Department records management, the public safety software system in Central Square, sole source in the amount of $93,821.48. Ms. Murray with a motion. Second. Second by Mr. Tinsley. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Question. Oh, you want a question? Yeah. Question first before the vote. Go ahead. Um, I see that the contract says it, it includes like regular updates. Is there, maybe I, I didn't read it. Is there a duration for how long this contract is? I, I guess I'm wondering if there's like a significant upgrade. Is that included in the contract we have or is this just for like regular updates? Uh, that would be for regular software updates. Um, if we were doing something like they came out with a new version, uh, typically there would be some sort of cost associated with that as well. Okay. Just so because not we a, have to get a time them. limit on this contract. It's more like a product limitation. Right. This is just maintenance. Okay. So. Thank you. All right. We have a motion by Commissioner Murray, second by Tinsley. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six zero. <laughs> Item 10, consider directing the Ag Power to place 100% of the city's 2022 MEAG Power Year in settlement refund of $869,863 into the city's MEAG Municipal Competitive Trust, flexible operating account, short term portfolio, and authorize its execution of the MEAG Power Project's 2022 year end settlement form by the mayor and the city manager. This is board with a motion, second by Mr. Brock. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six zero. Item 11 is consider adoption of the first amendment to the tower lease with option with T Mobile South LLC, amending the September 1, 2005 tower lease for the premises located at 1095 Every End Road, Griffin, Georgia, in order to provide for additional renewal terms at a rate of $3,000 per month beginning in September 2025 and for payment of a $10,000 administrative reimbursement due upon, um, upon execution of this amendment. Motion to approve. This is Murray with a motion. We have a second. Second by Commissioner Ward. All in favor, please signal by raise your Six, zero. Item 12 is consider a memorandum of understanding among the U.S. Naval Criminal Investigations investigative service and the participating federal, state, county, and municipal agencies in the Southeast Law Enforcement Alliance Project Lead Information Sharing Initiative known as the Law Enforcement Information Exchange links for the operation of a regional warehouse of database. Do we have a motion to approve? Ms. Murray with a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Tinsley. Any question? All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six, zero. Item 13 is consider adoption of the fifth supplement emergency resolution related to the January 12, 2023 disaster event and terminating the emergency declaration of a state of emergency and all subsequent emergency resolutions related to the aforementioned storm event. Ms. Murray with a motion, we have a second. Second by Commissioner Ward. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six zero. Item 14 is to consider an amendment to the amended and restated interlocal cooperative agreement to establish and maintain 
the Griffin Spalding County Land Bank Authority to consider a lease agreement for personnel services between the City of Griffin and the Spalding County Land Bank Authority. And I believe we've got a um, recommendation of denial from the county. If Mrs. O'Connor would like to join me for the details. Yes, so uh, let me address. So I, I just realized when you read it that I unfortunately have a typo. The personnel services being recommended now are between Spalding yeah, County. That's what I'm and the land bank authority. Yep. Okay. Um, so what has occurred, if you'll remember, is that um, two meetings ago for us, we, you approved the personnel lease agreement that we used for the airport authority. I've drafted it similarly to make the executive director report to the city as um, the airport authority does. So the land bank and airport authority will work almost in the same manner where they would also report to the land bank authority board. Um, we sent over that personnel lease along with the amended interlocal cooperation agreement that would make that change within the agreement to the county at their meeting Monday before last, so on the 6th, I think that was. Um, they voted to deny that um, agreement and then sent back an agreement asking that the employee re report to the county. Um, at the Land Bank Authority meeting um, back in May, I was very adamant that the executive director needs to report to a full-time person. The land bank board is a volunteer board of five. Um, they have not had the time to be able to supervise a part-time executive director. And so I do not believe and asked the four of them that were there um, at their main meeting if they could supervise a full-time executive director. They all agree that they cannot and that it does need to report to either the city or the county um, at the time the suggestion was the city. Out of frustration, I will admit on, on that meeting, I said, I don't care who it reports to, but it's got to report to somebody. Unfortunately, that was taken that I don't care if it reports to the county. And at the time, I don't know that I did care. Um, in looking at it, though, even at that particular meeting, there was not county representation at the meeting unless Ms. Wyndham was there representing the county. I'm not sure if she was representing the land bank authority in her capacity as the closing attorney for the land, land bank or if she was there as the county attorney. Um, but there was no other county employee present at that meeting, even, asked, even after Mr. Galloway had specifically asked for our attendance at that meeting. Um, that has been the case for the last three years. There has not been a county employee regularly present at a land bank meeting Mr. Jacobs came to work for the city. He was the last one there that represented um, a county employee. And so I do not think that they have the knowledge or the staffing ability to be able to handle uh, the land bank authority. I also think that the land bank is very differently situated within the city limits than it is in the county, just because of how city property operates. Um, if you are in the city limits, you're going to have um, more of a responsibility to, up, to keep up your property because you have neighbors. In the county, you may not. Um, and so I think that there's just a different way that you have to operate certain properties to the extent that we have expended over $100,000 within the last year maintaining land bank properties within the city limits. The county doesn't even have a proposal for what they would use to maintain properties within the county. Additionally, the way that the interlocal agreement is currently written, the properties that the land bank currently owns, which is over 300 now, um, would have to be split pro rata. So equal shares because we equally share the expense of the land bank. It does not specify if equal shares is by property value, by number of parcels, by acreage, by what? Mm -hmm. um, so I think, and, and at a meeting back in February of last year, when we had a joint Zoom meeting, I made the suggestion that we change how that was worded in the interlocal cooperation agreement, that if it was ever to be dissolved, that the properties were split so that those that go, that are within the county go back to the county and those that were in the city go back to the city. That change was not made. So if, if, if we deny um, the personnel lease or the, the amendment to the interlocal cooperation agreement, so we're not a party to the personnel lease the way it is presented tonight, um, then the only other option is for the county to agree for the executive director to become a city employee or to dissolve the land bank. Um, either way, I think that this is could be problematic going forward because we can't seem to agree on who needs to be responsible for the land bank activities. 
I know that since they have not had an executive director and our staff has had to fill that role, specifically Mr. Jacobs and Ms. Eames in planning and development, um, a lot of help from Ms. Cardin as well. They have done a tremendous job, but it is a ton of work. Um, we cannot continue to do that as staff. I'm already asking them to do two full-time jobs with the storm and their regular duties. So we will have to say from here forward, including with our even our IT staff that we make meetings, we can't come down there and set up Zoom and run Zoom and have all of this administrative and support services that we've performed over the last year without there being an actual executive director in place that we're here to support. If it's going to be a county employee, then we can either bow out, they can start their own main bank, whatever it is they want to do, but I can't see us continuing in the fashion that we are currently. Okay. And so your recommendation is for us to reject the offer and then they, the ultimatum is to for us to have a either a staff employ, member or, or dispose of the land bank authority. Either we employ the executive director of the land bank authority because we're better suited to do it, or we dissolve the land bank. Any questions or comments in regards to? Okay, so I'd like to make that motion that we um, send back a message to the county that. We're going to continue operating it's going to be under the direction of the city of Griffin staff. Or do we need to send a message or do we just need to deny this? We can deny the amendment. Um, and it within, I mean, I'll need to notify them of that. And within that notification, I can let them know that based on the discussion at tonight's meeting, that it is either a city employee or we will solve. Okay. I would prefer a motion that was passed specifically to the Okay. Yeah. So would you like to make that motion? Yeah. Yes, please. I, I move to deny uh, the consideration of the uh, amended interlocal co cooperation agreement. We have a motion, okay. Commissioner Flowers, second by Ms. Murray. Any other discussion? All in favor, please, for the denial, please signal raise your hand. Six zero. Item 15 is to consider a resolution pledging to practice and promote civility in Griffin, Georgia. Um, like we have the city of ethics, GMA has a city of civility opportunity, and several hundred cities have already adopted this and would like to consider this. A motion by Commissioner Murray, second by Commissioner Tinsley. Any other discussion? Comment. Yes, ma'am. Y'all better actually do it. Yes, ma'am. That's it. <laughs> We have a motion and second. All in favor, please sit up and raise your hand. All right, six zero. And each of you will need, um, there'll be an official document that each one of us will end up signing off on and sending it back to GMA. Thank you very much. Item 16 is consider authorization for Mayor Holberg and Commissioners Ward, Flowers, Murray, Tinsley, and McCord to attend the Georgia Municipal Association Annual Convention in Savannah, Georgia, to June 23 through 27. Commissioner Murray with a motion. We have a second. Second by Commissioner um, Ward. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. 6 0. And item 17 is consider cancellation of City of Griffin Board of Commissioners June 27 23 workshop and regular meetings due to commissioners' attendance at GMA Annual Convention in Savannah, Georgia, June 23 through 27 23. Commissioner Murray, second by Ms. Ward. All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. Six, zero. Excellent job, folks. Moving into the city manager's report. Very quickly, I wanted to thank the public works employees. I feel like a lot of times uh, electric and, and waterways or even get a lot of, um, of kudos for their work when we have some kind of disaster or even just your everyday tree that falls when I send it to Marisa. And so I'm glad that we're finally recognizing there are a lot of other people that have to even get the electric crews in there to the to the power lines. And that, that's a lot of those guys. Not to mention, we have a lot of divisions in our public works department. So the cemetery, the golf course, the parks, motor pool facilities, um, they do a really good job. And I'm excited that they are, they are with us as our employees. Also, just wanted to let y'all know that Ms. Thompson and I wrapped up our budget today. Um, we will be sending that to you on June 6th. Don't forget, we will call that meeting for 9 a.m. We will have our public hearing and our workshop then um, after our presentation. 
And then that night, um, or I'm sorry, following June 13th, our regular meeting, we'll have our second public hearing and adoption. So it is a little difficult this year, but I think we have presented, we will be able to present something that is fair um, without a tax increase. So um, I look forward to showing all that in a couple of weeks. And then of course, Memorial Day weekend is coming up with graduation. So everybody stay safe, be alert as Commissioner reports said last meeting. And also don't forget that city offices will be closed on Monday in honor of Memorial Day. That's it. Thank you. So what time is the workshop on Monday? Nine. Mr. Whalen. You're good. Mr. Brock. Commissioner Murray. Commissioner Fowler. No comment. Commissioner Ward. No. Commissioner Kendall. I will also want to say congratulations to Public Works Department. Those folks do an outstanding job. Anytime I would call them Marissa uh, for anything, such as the street sign that's damaged, it was fixed that day. So I appreciate the hard work you folks do very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just want to give a shout out to the staff. The Chapel Street um, Park mural dedication this past Thursday was excellent. So thank you all that were involved in that. I think it adds um, seniors to um, move our interest going up North Hill Street and tying our community together. So excellent job on that. Uh, June 10th is our June down second Saturday. Um, Beach party. So, just want to encourage everybody to get ready for that. All day has been lots happening, lots of sand, and lots of fun. So, thank you for everybody in that. Do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Second. And a motion by Commissioner Tinsley, second by Commissioner Murray. All in favor? Very well. How are you doing?